Okay, welcome. We are now going to play Daggerfall Unity. Um, I tried making this video twice last night uh, and I kind of ended up discarding them because I was not uh, I wasn't really pleased with the quality of them. Uh, so now this morning I'm going to try again and I've kind of this time I've kind of prepared a bit more for what kind of a character I want to create. So uh, it's going to be a bit easier now to actually more quickly create a character. I was mucking about last night and the video just ended up being quite quite bad. Um, so yeah, this is Dag Daggerfall Unity. It's based on the old classic 1996 Daggerfall, the second installment in the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, this is a really, really good game, a really big game. Um, it has its problems and the modding community and the guys making Daggerfall Unity have been trying to address those old problems that still persist. So this has become a very modernized version of old Daggerfall. It's a lot of fun to play um, and uh, yeah still has a bit of a few problems but um, the most the most has been sold um, back in 96 when it first came out it was like riddled with bugs and glitches and weird things. It just felt kind of unfinished. Um, Daggerfall Unity feels more like a, like a professionally finished game in a way. So yeah we're just going to dive in now and the goal with this let's play is going to to be for me to complete the main quest of Daggerfall at least because I've never done that not back in the 90s when I played it nor since have I ever completed the main quest of this game because it becomes so kinda <coughs> immersed in the world in a way that you become distracted by all the little things you can do outside the main quest so uh, yeah um, and I kind of have an idea of a character we're going to create. It's going to be a middle-aged, very angry woman named Karen. Uh, she's going to be from High Rock. And um, uh, the idea of her is that she is of the lesser nobility in High Rock, but in her childhood uh, her family estates were usurped by some sort of competing minor lord and her parents estates were burned down so they were forced into exile and they went to uh, Cyrodiil and since then they have been living near the Emperor's court and uh, so she's been kind of raised uh, at court uh, her name is Karen and that's from the m famous meme. So she's a very angry, very bitter, uh, kind of very impolite, um, rude, uh, spoiled, entitled woman. Uh, but she's going to be quite, quite uh, skilled in fighting and uh, because she's been raised in the traditional ways of the nobility so uh, so uh, uh, she's going to have that at least now let's see this is important what we choose here choose from a list of possible classes to play you can also create your own custom class a uh, custom character class that's what we want to do always always that's what we want to do character creation in this game is nothing but really awesome 
So we want to go down here to the bottom. We can choose any of these, of course, but we want to make our own custom, custom class. Okay, so on the other screen here, I have a, I have a screenshot from uh, my earlier, uh, my earlier uh, attempts at making a character. So I can go through this quite quickly now, but I'm going to explain why I do these things now, because I think. In the we're going to make her quite strong in the early game and then we're going to so so she's going to be strong that means she's going to be strong strength and have a lot of agility <coughs> excuse me I think those are the most important uh, attributes in the beginning of the game then we're going to work on her intelligence as we go so we get her magical abilities up because I want her to also be kind of magical that's why she's a breton otherwise she would be a nord but uh, she's a breton because i kind of want to use magic with this character at least later on in, in the game in the beginning it's going to be a lot of melee so uh, yeah um and this is quite easy if you're creating character uh, karen the meme karen uh, the very impolite rude Karen because then we can turn her personality way down because Karen is a rude impolite person that nobody likes so we're going to take 20 points of that I'm also going to take kind of five from speed and willpower willpower is the resistance to um, to uh, magic the resistance to other spells I actually have those attributes in the other screen here let's see willpower governs resist resistance to spell effects and the ease of increasing willpower related skills agility here is so important because uh, agility governs ability to hit a target to avoid getting hit and the ease of increasing agility related skills I'm now really reading from the UESP uh, wiki that's a really good resource for all Elder Scrolls games now it's easy we're going to pump 10 points into strength and the rest into agility that's going to make us kinda as well as strong as we possibly can be in the early game In the early game we're going to fight with a uh, ebony dagger but uh, I want her not to be focused on short uh, short sword swords because she's an she's of the nobility so short swords and daggers and stuff it's is for that's that's for cowards uh, by their thinking so the first thing I'm going to put in here is long blade actually then we're going to do dodging and uh, I think we're going to do destruction because later on in the game I will want to focus on uh, destruction magic now we get to restoration is what I want and medical so we can heal well when, while we're resting now I'm going to add actually short blade here Uh, as for the minor skills, we're going to go do critical strike. I don't really know what use critical strike is. I think it it just um, increases the uh, chance of getting hit, uh, get, getting critical strikes on enemies. But I, 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 well, logically that's what it does. But I don't really know how the critical strike system here works because I I don't think there's ever a pop-up or a message that you've successfully performed a critical strike on on anyone on any enemy thaumaturgy I'm going to put that in here because there's something we I don't remember what it is but there's something good within the school of thaumaturgy that I just have in the back of my head I don't know I don't remember what it is jumping 
Did I put in running here? Should I put running instead of jumping? Mysticism. Uh, there's something good about that too that I don't remember. So I'm going to. Should I do running? I think I'm going to do running instead of. Uh, Do I, do I already have? Oh yeah, I have running. Okay, running and jumping. Yeah, great. That's how we do that. I want to increase this to 10 at least. Now we're going to do the special advantages first. Uh, I have my screenshot here. I need to take. Uh, need to have a look at it. We, we're going to do only three. First, two really important ones that I always do. Um, in every game I play. They are, they are kinda expensive but uh, they are so important because it's really really annoying to get paralyzed or poisoned in the early game. So I always do those. I talk like I'm a pro at this game but I'm not a pro. Uh, in fact I'm I'm not really that good at the game. We're also going to do uh, yeah, I'm not really good at the game, but I do like this character creation. You can create pr exactly what kind of a character you want. You can even make him really, really OP, overpowered, or really, really underpowered. So you can... Uh, I like that. You can really make what kind of a character you... Really. You can make a superhero, you can make an anti-hero. It's up to you. So now we're going to do... Where's the... Yeah, the increased majory. I think I'm going to do 1.75. Those are kind of expensive, so now we need to get that pointer down by editing the special disadvantages. Oh, I have. I have a visitor. It's my cat. One of them, it's Spock. And uh, yeah, you're probably going to hear a lot about my cats in the videos here because they usually don't care whether I'm recording or not. So he's going to get a bit, a few treats here. Um, yeah, where was I? The uh, uh, disadvantages. So let's. Yeah, we need to get that pointer down now. Um, hang on, I'm going to show you here. This pointer goes up when I add the advantages. As you see, it's kind of high now. I can't go into the red area. The higher I get, the more difficult it gets to uh, level up. So I need to get it down kind of in the middle is where I like it, of course. That's, that's like the uh, optimal stage here. So we need to add a lot of disadvantages unfortunately. There are some that are very easy, some that are very hard to add here. First one, I'm going to add low tolerance to fire because her, when she grew up her house was burned down. So that's why she has low tolerance to fire. Kind of a phobia. Then we're going to continue here with with the the darkness powered major. We're going to add a lower magic ability in daylight. Actually, uh, I think I think that means that my magic ability will be lower in daylight, i.e., when I'm outside. So I think that while I'm st while I'm in a dungeon, this won't affect me. Uh, but I'm not really sure on that because I've never tried it. So I'm going to try this now. In fact, I find it. I find the character you create is more interesting with stuff like this, stuff that you have to kind of work around, and it makes them more of a real personality. Uh, so that brought the pointer down substantially here. So we need to add a few more. Um, we're going to add some forbidden weaponry. Um, 
she's never going to fight with a bow so I'm going to forbid her from that and that's miss missile weapons we're going to forbid her from using axes because she's a noble she's a noble from high rock uh, axes are for barbarians is what they think forbidden material orkish because again she's nobility and uh, orcs are barbarians so she wouldn't be seen wearing that although orkish is probably one of the really better materials so we're going to forbid her from that yeah we brought brought that down quite quite good now um, we have you have uh, only a limited amount of these that you can add so I think we have like two left we're going to do shields then we're going to forbid her from bucklers because those are kind of useless and we're going to forbid her from you can really cheese this too you can really like take advantage of this system for an example if you're a Nord you have your resistant ra you're racially resistant to is your racial ability to be resistant to frost now you can add in here I can show you uh, uh, I need to add this first round shield you can add in weakness Ah, okay I'll fill this in I'm not going to change this but you can add in here weakness to frost that means that the racial ability the strength cancels out the weakness so uh, that's still gonna to gonna move the pointer substantially so you, you kind of cancel it out but you still get the bonus of the of lowering the pointer into this area if you get my meaning here now I'm, I'm rambling um, this is what I wanted to do here we need to have a class now it doesn't it doesn't matter matter we're going to m create Karen's I guess something like that should be sufficient uh, yeah the pointer is now Um, what do I have on the other screen yeah that's what I had here so um, this is what we needed to do here um, we've created our class this is going to be hopefully very good for the early game um, and then we really need to work on these two for the late game because um, in in the late game we're going to really want to use magic uh, mid to late game but in the beginning this is going to be really a powerful character um, this is important to fast start by automatically you will be able to adjust choose your character's career path by answering 12 this is the one we want to do because we want the um, ebony dagger okay this is this is really interesting and fun to cr to do because it really sets the background of your character. What school of magic have you been studying the longest? Uh, we have destruction as our main, but I'm going to. I think I'm going to do. Um, no, I'm going to do the de destruction. What motivates you into a life of adventure? What would motivate Karen? She's. She lost her home. She's been a kind of a la landless noble. So I guess fame, to become famous, to make her family name famous and to kind of get on the good side with the emperor so he might award them a new um, fiefdom, I guess. In between formal study you spent your time, well she's not much of a socializer is she? Um, and she's not into street smarts or economics well perhaps 
swimming. I think sparring would be her thing to get her kind of aggressions out. Since childhood you have saved. I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to make that a cuirass. That's an heirloom, that cuirass. In gratitude for services rendered, the Emperor gave you an ebony dagger, is what we're going to take here. As you grew older, you received additional magical training in. Well, we're going to make the, that the School of Restoration then. That was kind of cool. As a child, your nickname was... Her nickname was Scrapper. You are friendlier than most with... Uh, I know a landless noble. Well, she hates everything barbaric and primitive, so not the Kentors and not the Daedra. Of course not. Um, she is very religious, conservative religious. I think the glorious, the glorious dragons. Of all disagreeable types, you have the most personal hatred for. Oh God, it would be the stupid peasants, the stupid fast food workers. Yeah. This character is, going to, character is going to have a really hard time getting along with people. Uh, but that kind of doesn't matter in the game, I think. But it's going to be a really funny thing to see how it works. Uh, you are intimate friends with a monk, a rogue, an assassin, a warrior, or a mage. Um, either a mage or a warrior, I think. Uh, let's do the warrior. What god, if any, do you worship? That's easy. That's Mara, the mother goddess. Uh, I want her. Her family is. I have kind. Of, I haven't really planned that, but in the back of my head, her family is from the province of Anticlear, which is one of the neighboring provinces to Daggerfall. I'll show it on the map later when we get that far. Anticlear, only because it sounds cool. The province name sounds cool, and there, the main goddess in that province is Mara uh, and Mara is the mud is the goddess of love if you played Skyrim you know it's at Mara's temple you get married and all that sort of stuff Dibella I could have gone with her um, but I kind of she's more like uh, sexuality and prostitution and stuff like that. Uh, my Karen now is a very conservative religious person and Mara is just suitable for that I think. Yeah, Mother Goddess. Yeah. You have the most trouble Oh God, yes. Getting along with others, of course. So my reputation, oh I forgot to set the reputations, but they kind of don't, don't matter. You can set the reputations in the, in the character creation, or, or in the class creation screen that we just uh, did earlier. But it kind of doesn't matter. So commoners, the re my reputation with the commoners is unchanged, with the scholars it's gone higher, and with the underworld it's gone higher, okay. It's cool. Uh, okay, her name is Karen, but she's a Breton, so you spell it oh, in a Breton fashion, uh, kind of French sounding. I haven't thought of an of a last name. Um, let's just do it like that then. Karen, Karen of Aunt Claire. <laughs> And I know there's a face in here that's exactly like the meme Karen. Karen. Exactly. That's like meme Karen. A middle-aged, middle-aged, very conservative, rude, entitled woman. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Okay, now we're going to roll here this. Uh, we're going to see if we can get... Oh, that's kind of good, I think. It's a 12. We might 
Uh, yeah, I don't think this will be. Spell points 87. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Agility. Should I pu push strength up to 70? Or should I go with agility? Yeah, I think I'll do it. Like I could also re roll. Let's try re roll. I want this at 60 at least. Yeah, this is a good roll. I could push intelligence to 60 now as well. And the rest into strength. Let's give willpower up to 50. Th that was a good roll, I think. This is going to be a strong character, I, I think it is. Let's put that last point into endurance. I think this is going to be a really strong character. Um, let's see if we can get those to 30. Her destruction is 34, that's really good. Let's, let's get Longblade to 33. Uh, restoration short blade we can use that in the beginning so I'm going to pump that up a bit and the rest into that then. often I do I just try to level these uh, because I don't really think it's it makes a difference Let, let's just put those into critical strike those were our bonus points. As you can see, this character creation is so detailed that uh, you can, yeah, as I said, you can really create whatever kind of a character you want. It's really an awesome, awesome, awesome system. I wish they had kind of continued on this and kind of modernized it for each successive Elder Scrolls game. But then again, I can understand how generations nowadays uh, because I, I kind of grew up with the Ultima games back in the 80s and uh, I also played a bit of the old pen and paper RPGs so I grew up with those kinds of things and this just takes you back to to those times the pen and paper type thing I always leave the reflexes on average because I'm not a very kind of FPS type guy. Um, I like strategy games and uh, slow games. So I'm going to leave it at our average. Yeah, I think this is good. Karen of Anticlair. I think we're going to roll with this. I think it's, she's a strong character. At least early game, we need to work on her intelligence. And perhaps even on her personality, she needs to work on herself. But let's do it. I'll just let the uh, 400 intro years roll. after Tiber Septim's reign, the beginning will meet the end and the bloody circle will close at the Empire of Cambriel. The unworthy heirs of the Septim dynasty have allowed the bonds of the Empire to weaken and crack. Uriel Septim, the Seventh, cannot repair what his ancestors ignored. The provinces fight among themselves like neglected children, drunk with rebellion, and one indomitable power hides itself, but not forever. Here we go. This is a classic, classic scene. I'm going to talk a bit about it later when we get into the game. This is really awesome.
excuse the gloom, but none may know of this meeting. The nature of my trouble is darker still. Over a year ago, King Lysandus of Daggerfall died honorably on the field of battle. He was as loyal a subject, ally, and friend as you are. I did grieve for him, but his spirit does not rest. With a spectral army, he haunts his former kingdom, crying for revenge. I do not know why a good and loyal man would be so cursed. Perhaps you can find the answer and close the marble jaws of oblivion, bringing peace to his soul. I ask this as your emperor and your friend. I have one lesser request. Several years ago I wrote a letter to the Queen of Daggerfall. It never arrived. The letter was of a sentimental and personal nature. If you find and destroy that letter, I will be grateful. Now, my champion, rest well this night, for tomorrow you sail for the kingdom of Daggerfall. <clears throat> oh, that is just so amazing. Um, I've been trying to find out who the guy is uh, that plays the Emperor there in that scene we just watched. No one seems to know and uh, also I was a part of the Discord for the, the development team of Daugafor. They u A couple of years ago they got together again and they planned to make a kind of a suc successor to Daugafor. Uh, the project didn't didn't bear fruit I guess but uh, it was really interesting to see those guys talk about these things that they had uh, from the development process of of uh, Daggerfall. They were very young in the 90s um, when they made this game. And it, as you can see the guy to the right in the scene with the Emperor there, uh, he's one of the development team. So they didn't even have money to uh, kind of get real known actors and the guy playing the emperor he was allegedly just some gentleman they picked up from a local Shakespeare club now he didn't know that he was going to do the role of his lifetime I guess because uh, that's what that became he's a legend now his performance is stellar I think in that short little video and uh, he plays the same character that will a little more than 10 years later be played by Sir Patrick Stewart of uh, Star Trek fame real known superstar you know so that's the difference difference between um, 1996 Daggerfall and 2006 Uh, oblivion that's what 10 10 years made it made what kind of a difference 10 years made in in the history of the Elder Scrolls from uh, from an amateur actor to Sir Patrick Stewart oh well I'm digressing again I'm going to read this out and then we're going to start the adventure uh, I'm going to take a little break but I think I'm going and then I, I'm going to go out and have a cup of coffee with my wife and then I'm going to come in again and continue and I think I'm going to cut these two videos into one I've been going for 35 minutes already 
so yeah there, there's a lot of stuff I have to talk about um, about the Elder Scrolls and about Daggerfall so these videos are going to be very slow I guess and we're going to have a lot of fun exploring this world um, you wake and look around the room some hours ago you were in a you were in a boat en route to Daggerfall when a storm of supernatural strength boiled over the Iliac Bay like a malefic creature. Your boat was destroyed, but you managed to swim through the churning water to a promontory rock. There you found a cave and escaped the, escaped the fury of the storm. You had only just lit a small fire when a mudslide sealed you within. Your fear of being buried alive calmed when you saw the corridor leading out of the cavern. Perhaps there is a way out of this cave after all. Once free of the cave, you can begin the Emperor's quest. And we're not going to use a tutorial. And do you want to receive an early artifact quest as part of the DFU quest pack? Yes, I do want that. Yeah, now we're in the game, finally. That took only half an hour. Uh, the first thing you have to do here is to save it. Let's put in her... her uh, kind of last name to... save it. Game saved. And quick save is on F9. There we have them. And I think I'm quite familiar with the controls. I've changed a, f changed a few of them from the standard, but I think I think I'm going to be uh, familiar with them. I played this a few days ago. I kind of started a character, so. Uh, yeah, okay. If you're familiar with the old Dagger 4 from 96, you can see that a lot of this is looks much different. Like the log here, that used to be a 2D kind of sprite. And the fireplace. These things are now real objects. 3D objects. They used to look like this. Like a, you can see how that moves. Like a 2D, just uh, look. It looks like a sticker, doesn't it? So yeah. Um, okay. Let's get on. That's our uh, iron cuirass and our ebony dagger. That does five to ten damage. And our iron longsword. There we go. Let's arm ourselves. That's the e ebony dagger. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little break. Uh, go out for a bit. Because it's kind of hot in here too. So I'm going to save this. On the quick save. And I'm going to get back to it. And we're going to get through the, this first dungeon. Privateer's Hold. In this first episode. <laughs> 